Good morning everyone, how's it going today? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to be explaining you everything you need to know about Crew AI and how to start off with it, how it works behind the scenes, and yeah, I mean, we're going to be building our entire crew from scratch. We're not going to be using their builders so that you know exactly what is actually going on behind the scenes. By the end of this video, you will have this crew that is going to be able to think by itself. You're going to be able to, def to design your own crews. And we're going to be looking at it with very nice diagrams that I have preferred, prepared right here for you and to explain you the entire process behind all of Crew AI. So thank you very much for being here and let's start off with the video. By the way, uh, there are a couple more things that I would like to tell you. First of all, that you will find a link to this article in the description, which is the written version of this tutorial. It contains not only the text, but also the diagrams that I'm going to be using to explain all of this, the code and the link to the GitHub repository. And second thing is that I recently opened a Patreon account. So if you would consider becoming a Patreon and supporting the channel, you will get ad free access and early access to my content whenever it's possible. Thank you very much. If you're considering that, you will allow me to continue doing this for free. So thank you very much. And without any further ado, let's get right on with the video. Okay, so the first thing that I want to tell you is what actually is Crew AI and why it is so revolutionary. So Crew AI is this new framework that allows you to build your own teams of autonomous agents. All of these agents are going to be working for you to help you achieve your goal. Each agent is going to be an expert in a different task and they will all have this single goal in common to help you achieve it. Uh, this goal can be either crafting an email based on some research, creating a business plan, writing a book, creating a blog post, or maybe even creating an entire application like you see right here. The possibilities are basically infinite. All we have to do is think of the process and the tasks that our agents have to complete and assign them to our crew of agents. They will do all of the work for us. In this tutorial, I am going to introduce you to the basics of the framework how it works behind the scenes and how to create your own crew using the sequential process. I'm going to talk more about the process in a moment. This is a completely hands-on tutorial, so by the end of the video you will have developed your own crew, you will understand how it works and you will be capable of creating your own crews from now on to create your own projects and be your own master of your own AI agents crew. So let's start developing this. So here's the diagram that we're going to be, that represents the crew that we're going to be building today. It is a crew that will take the participants, the context and the goal of a meeting that you're going to have. And it's going to return to you the brief for that meeting. A brief that will include research about the participants, the industry and the best talking points to cover during the meeting. Okay. The idea is that you're going to have four autonomous agents a researcher, which is going to be the one who's going to research the people and the companies, an industry analyst, which is going to be the one who's going to analyze the industry, meeting strategist, who's going to be the one who is going to plan the meeting itself, and a brief or summary writer, which is going to be the one who's going to write the clear and informative brief for the users. Okay. These agents are going to perform this set of tasks. The first one is going to be the research, where they are going to research the participants and the context of the meeting. Then the analyze industry task, which is going to be where they're going to analyze the industry trends. The meeting strategy, which is going to take whatever information was found during these previous two steps, and is going to develop the talking points about them, about them involving the participants and the context of the meeting. Then lastly, we're going to have a task which is summarizing and briefing, which is going to involve all of the information that was returned from these three other tasks and will consti constitute a brief for the meeting. Okay. 
Now our agents are going to have access to a set of tools as well. So we have the EXA toolset. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that in a moment. But the idea is that they are going to be able to choose to search the web whenever they need to. Okay, This is essential for two of our agents because they are going to have to find information about the people and the companies and the industries involved. Okay, Now I realize that this is probably not the most useful on a day-to-day -day basis example, but the idea is that this example is complex enough that that it shows you how Crew AI works behind the scenes, what are the components of, uh, of its process, while at the same time being simple enough so that a beginner can understand it. So that's why I chose this example from their documentation to build it. And that is what we're going to be building today from scratch so that you see everything that is going on behind the scenes. So let's talk a little bit about how to plan your crew before you actually start coding. And at the same time, I'm going to explain to you a little bit more about each of the main components of Crew AI. Okay, so there are four components in Crew AI. The first one is tasks, which you see right here, which can be considered the backbone of your crew. The second one is the agents, which are the ones who are going to be performing the tasks. The tools is number three, which are the ones who are going to be used by your agents in order to complete the tasks. And four is the process. Okay, In this case, we're going to be covering the sequential process, which is going to complete one task after another. But know that there are other kinds of processes like hierarchical, where you have a manager agent who is going to assign tasks to each one of its agents in its team, uh, depending on what it thinks that has to be done. But we will cover that in another video. I want to focus on the sequential one because it's a little bit easier to understand and to grasp the power of Crew AI. So when you're going to be planning your crew, what you're going to want to have first is your input and your output. The input is basically just the information that you want to give to your crew in order to achieve your output. In this case, our input is going to be the list of participants, the context of the meeting, and the goal of the meeting. And we want our crew to be able to give us a brief of the meeting that will contain the industry analysis and the research of the participants in it by the end of the process. Okay. So that is how you should plan your crew. We're going to be covering it a little bit more in detail, but just know that you should consider the tasks as the backbone of your crew. You can consider this as once you have your input and your output, the tasks are going to be the to-do list of things that you would have to complete in order to get to your task if you were to if you were the one who was performing this ta this goal, okay? In our case, if we had this information and we wanted to get a brief of the meeting, we would probably need to research the participants, analyze the industry, create a meeting strategy and summarize everything. So think about it as your to-do list, all right? Then you can, from your to-do list, you can start creating and designing your agents and then your tools that your agents are going to need. Awesome, so now that we have finished creating our plan, we can effectively start coding. Now I'm going to tour you real quick around my setup right here. I have my source file, my source directory, sorry, where I have my main file, which is going to be the place of my application. I have my git ignore file, and I have my .tnv file right here with a bunch of API keys that I'm going to explain to you in a moment, okay? But for now, know that you're going to want to create a Conda environment. I, I named myself Crew AI Tutorial, and you're going to want to use Python 3.10 upwards, okay? Now, once you have created your Conda environment, you're going to have to activate it. I'm going to activate mine right here. And you're going to want to install Crew AI. Now, I already have it installed, so for you, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. But once you have Crew AI, you're going to be able to follow through the rest of the tutorial. Now, once you have this, let's actually start building our tasks. 
So now that we have our setup, we can actually start creating our tasks. Because remember that our tasks are the backbone of our crew, right? So the first task that we're going to be creating is the research task. And as you can see right here, it comes with some properties. It comes with a description, which has to be very detailed because it is the description that is going to go to the language model in the prompt. It has to have a very clear output so that the agent knows what to expect by the end of this task. And it has to also define an agent that is going to be the one who is going to be performing this task. Okay. So let's do that. First of all, I am going to create a new file called tasks.py and in it I oops and in it I am going to initialize this new tasks class. But first of all, I'm going to just import from textwrap. I'm going to import didn't just to make things look a little bit nicer. I'm going to import from crew AI. I'm going to import task. And let's just create our first class, which is going to be called meeting prep tasks. There you go. And now this class is going to have several methods and each method is going to return an instance of a different task. Okay. So the first method that I'm going to create is going to be called research task. And this method is going to return a task. Okay. Now, this method is going to take several, several parameters. The first one is going to be the agent that is going to be performing this task. Then it's going to take some context. In this case, it's going to be the meeting participants. There might be a better way to organize the, the context for a specific task in a dictionary or something like that. But in this case, we're just going to be sticking to how the how the tutorial is in the official documentation. And the task that we're going to return is this one right here that we're going to be initializing, first of all, with a description. Okay. Now, remember that your description has to be very detailed because this is the one that is going to go into your into your language model as a prompt. So here you have a very detailed description. Conduct comprehensive research on each of the individuals and companies involved in the upcoming meeting. Gather information of recent news, achievements, professional background, and any relevant business activities. And then we're passing as some variables this meeting context and the participants of the meeting. Okay. Then the second thing that we have to pass here is the expected output as we had right here. Okay. I mean, of course, in the diagram, I summarized everything in a few words, but the idea is to have everything as, as clear as possible when you're defining this. So here, let's also create this didn't part right here. And this one is going to return a detailed report summarizing the key findings about each participants and company, highlighting information that could be relevant for the meeting. Okay. So that is the expected output. And then we're going to assign an agent, which is going to be the agent that we're going to pass into this method. And another thing right here that we can set is async execution which means that this task is going to be run at the same time as this other task, which is also asynchronous, because they don't need the context of any other task before them. They can be performed at the same time. And this one, on the other hand, has to have async set to false, because this one requires these two to have finished first, because this one uses the results from research and analyze industry as context. Okay. I'm going to show you how to set the context later, but for now, just consider that by setting the async setting to true, we're going to allow these two tasks to perform simultaneously. Okay. So there you go. This is the first task and that's how you create a, a method that is going to return your task. 
Now I'm going to copy the other tasks right here from the documentation and just explain them real quick. There you go. This is the industry analysis task, which is another method that is going to return um, another task. And this one also very detailed description, analyze the current industry trends, challenges, etc. Also passes in the participants. I'm actually going to change the variable names right here because in the documentation they use context as a um, variable for the prompt and it is it can be confusing because it's not the same context as the context of the task i'm going to sh tell you a little bit more about that in a moment but just, just changing these names to make it a little bit easier to understand then we have the meeting strategy task which is this one right here and this one just as the other ones is going to return just like the other one has a description and here we have the meeting objective as a variable for the prompt as well so develop strategic talking points etc remember as detailed as possible and also a very detailed output and as you can see this too industry analysis and meeting strategy do not have async execution. Um, sorry, this one does, because this is the, the other async execution task. But this one doesn't, because async is set to false by default. Okay, so you don't have to assign it. There you go. And then the last task that we're going to create is this last one right here, which is the summarizing and briefing task. And this one, we have it right here. It is going to also take the meeting context, the meeting objective, and an agent that is going to perform the task. So the description as well, very detailed, compile all the research findings, industry analysis, and strategic talking points into a concise, comprehensive briefing document for the meeting, okay? So there you go. These are the four tasks that we're going to be creating. And they all have an agent that we're going to have to declare when we're calling these methods. And these methods are going to return the task already um, uh, created. So there you go. That's how you organize and create your tasks. Once that we have our tasks finished, we can actually start creating our agents, okay? And in order to do that, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to create this new file called agents.py, like that. I'm going to put it right here inside the source file as well. Source directory, sorry. Now let's actually start coding our agents. So first of all, just like before, we're going to uh, import dident from TextWrap to make this look a little bit nicer. And then from CrewAI, we're going to be importing agent, okay? Now what we can do is we can create, just as we did before, a class for the agents. We're going to call it meeting prep agents. And this one, just like task, is going to contain several methods and each method is going to return a, an agent. In this case, we have GitHub Copilot giving us a recommendation, although it is wrong, so we're not going to take it. The first thing that we're going to want here is the research agent method, which is this one right here. The researcher who is going to, whose goal is going to be to research people and companies. It's going to have a backstory and it's going to have a set of tools that it can use, okay? So let's actually create this like this. We're going to be, oh, sorry. This one's going to have self like that. And right here, this one is going to return an agent, okay? Now, this agent is going to have, just like we said before, a role, and this one is going to be the research agent. Um, we're going to call it research specialist, actually. Then it's going to have a goal as well, 
just like before, remember that this has to be very detailed because all of this information is going to go into the prompt that we're going to send to the language model. I'm going to show you how that prompt works in a moment, but just bear with me that you have to make this as clear as possible. Now, in this case, my goal is going to be conduct thorough research on people and companies involved in the meeting. Then we are going to have the tools that is going to have that is going to have access to and this is going to be a list of all these tools right now in this case I'm going to leave the tools empty because we haven't created them yet but I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment and then something else that is pretty important is the backstory okay now the backstory is pretty interesting technique that you can use in prompt engineering and it comes built in with Cree AI. But the idea is that when you want your AI agent or your AI assistant to perform better, you want to give it a backstory. So for example, if you want to give if you want it to perform good research, you have to tell it that it that it is a research specialist and that it is very good at what it's doing and you have to create this sort of personality for your agent for it to take that personality and give you the response that you expect. So in this case we have I have this backstory written by the Crew AI team. As a research specialist, your mission is to uncover detailed information about the individual entities participating in the meeting. Your insights will lay the groundwork for strategic meeting preparation right now this is going to go into the prompt for the llm along with the description of the task so it has to to go well with the task it is going to perform right and then last but not least we're going to set this to verbose so that we can see in real time what the agent is thinking about okay and that is the first agent so we have effectively created the method that will return the researcher. Now I will copy from the documentation the industry analyst, the meeting strategist and the brief summary writer. To do this, I'm just going to copy this from here. There you go. As you can see, it also has a very detailed backstory and it has some tools that we have not created yet, so I'm going to delete them. So we have the industry analyst whose goal is to analyze the current his industry trends, etc. And it also has a very detailed backstory. Same thing with the meeting strategist, which is going to take, which is going to perform the task, the third task right here, which is the meeting strategy task. And this one is going to have also a backstory as a strategy advisor, your expertise will guide the development, blah, blah, blah. And then last but not least, we're going to have this specialist in writing briefs for the meeting. Okay, so here we have this specialist briefing coordinator. His goal is to compile all gathered information into concise, informative briefing document. Okay, and I have deleted the tools from this too, because I don't think they, they actually need tools. I'm going to give you more information about that in a moment, but just know that we have effectively created our four agents right here. We're going to create the tools that they're going to use to search the web in a moment, but for now you know that we have these agents and we have the tasks. Awesome, you have effectively created all of your tasks and all of your agents. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to create the tools that our agents are going to use. Okay, These agents are going to be able to decide whether or not to use a tool depending on their goal. And they're going to be able to think about it using the language model. I'm going to show you how that works behind the scenes in a little bit. But for now, just bear with me. We're going to have to create the tools first. Okay. Now, the tools that they're going to need are tools that are going to allow them to search the web. In this case, we we're going to be using EXA, which is a service that allows you, that exposes an API that allows you to search the web 
using embeddings based search. So basically you're going to create a few methods that are going to return results from the web. And our agents are going to be able to use these functions on these methods and to get the results and to choose what to do depending on the results that they got. Okay. In this case, we're going to be creating a function or a method called search, which is going to search the websites based on a query. Find similar, which is going to search for similar websites based on a URL and get contents, which is going to get the contents from a website, giving the ID of that website because EXA works with IDs. Okay. Now, know that these are very important properties of your tools. They have to have a very clear description of what they do because your agent is going to read that description and it is based on that description that is going to decide whether or not it has to use that tool to perform its action or not. Okay, so your description has to be very clear. Your input has to be very clear as well, which means that you have to be very explicit into what kind of uh, data your agent is supposed to, to use when it's going to be using this tool and what it can expect from it. So in the case of the search and the find similar tools, we're going to have that they return three results. Okay, so let's build these tools. Right, so as mentioned before, we're going to be using EXA to create our tools. And EXA actually gives you a, a thousand requests per month for free. So it's pretty good for testing. And now you can go right here in EXA documentation and we can see how we can use this. So we are going to install EXA using pip install EXA py. So I'm going to come right here, I'm going to do not here, I'm going to come where my environment is active. And once that EXA is installed, I'm going to be able to come right here to create a tools.py file. And I'm going to put this file into my source directory. And inside of here, I'm going to actually start coding my tools. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import OS because we're going to want to use the API key from EXA that we're going to get in a moment. Then we're going to import from EXA py. We're going to import the EXA client, just like they say right here. And then we're going to initialize our client like this right here. But before doing that, we're going to create a class that is going to wrap it all and make it a little bit more organized. We're going to call this EXA search toolset. And here we're going to define a method we're going to define a method that is going to return the initialized instance of EXA. Okay, so this method is going to call, be called like this and it's going to return an instance of EXA like this. And remember that in order to initialize it, we have to pass in the API key. So we're going to pass in the API key like this right here, OS environment, and we're going to get EXA API key. So there we go. Now we can actually start coding our tools. And in order to code our tools, we're going to use the decorator from Langchain. Okay. Remember that Crew AI is built using Langchain. So everything that you have in Langchain is compatible with Crew AI. So from Langchain.agents, we're going to import the tool decorator. And that's the one that we're going to be using right here to create our first method that is going to be this first tool search. Okay. So the method is going to be called search. Remember to name them with, um, with a name that, that shows what this method does because the agent is going to have access to the name of the function as well. It's also going to have access to the name of the input variable. And it's important to add the type right here so that the agent knows what kind of um, input this method expects. Okay. And here we're also going to need this documentation string that is also going to be available for the agent to know what this tool is for. So here we have that the tool is for searching for a web page based on the query. Okay. And this one is going to return the results from EXA. And 
in order to call the results, remember that here in the exit documentation, we have to do excess search our query and then use auto prompt true. So let's return. First of all, we're going to have to call this function to get our client. So we're going to call it from the current class. We're going to call exa. We're going to call search. And here we're going to pass in the query. Now, for some reason in the documentation, they use an F string to wrap the query like this. So I'm going to do it like they do. But know that, uh, I mean, apparently you can just pass in the query like that. But let's just follow what the guys from Crew AI did. Then we're going to set the use auto prompt to true. And last but not least, let's set the number of results to three right there you go so that is the first tool that we have and the second tool remember it is find similar which is going to be uh, I mean the description of which is going to be search for similar websites based on a URL so I have it right here let me copy it for you there we go like that so again, a very clear description of what this function does, which is the tool that our agent is going to be able to use. Search for web pages similar to a given URL. The URL is the input parameter right here. The URL passed in should be a URL returned from search. And here we're going to just correct the name of the class. There you go and the method is find similar. Of course, you can find the methods in the EXA documentation, but I'm just going over like this to make it a little bit clearer and faster. And then last but not least, we have the get contents tool, which is going to explore the contents of a given website, web page, I mean. So get contents, it gets the IDs of your, of your retrieved, web pages and here's the description get the contents of the web page the IDs must be passed in as a list and the list should have been the one returned from search and here we're going to I was just making some tests here we're going to copy the evil I we're going to first convert the this string into an actual object right here then we're going to call exa to get the contents and then you go this is going to return the contents in a string so there you go and now last but not least actually what we can do is we're going to create a function called tools that is actually all it's going to do is going to return a list of all of these tools right because this is the function that we're going to want to use to assign these tools to our agents right here. Okay, so in order to do that, remember that. All right, so for now, just know that our tools are completely coded, they're finished, and these are the tools that our agents are going to be able to use. Now that the tools are finished, we're going to have to assign the tools to the agents. Because remember that we have these two agents that are going to have access to these other tools, right? So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our agents and here in tools, what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to import from tools, import extra search toolset. And remember that we defined this method called tools that effectively returns a list of our tools in this class. So there we go. We're going to do the same thing with our industry analyst because it will also have access to these tools. And there you go. So now we have effectively created our tools and we have effectively assigned them to the agents that are going to be using them. Now, let's talk a little bit about how agents use these tools and how agents think. And then we're going to see how they interact with each other. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how agents work. 
and how they think by themselves in order to choose tools that will help them to complete their tasks, okay? In order to do this, we have to understand a couple of concepts, um, which is that Crew AI actually implements Langchain agents and they implement a type of agent called React agent. This is not the JavaScript framework. These are agents that actually work in a loop of chain of thoughts in which they enter this loop until and they think about the task and execute actions about it until they find that they have found the actual answer to the question, okay? So let me show you real quick how this looks like. So what is actually happening is that we're passing in some context to the agent. The agent is sending that context to the language model and it is using the language model to think, okay? So the agent is going to be saying something like, given the following context, what action would you take? And then it's going to think about it, it's going to present a thought. So for example, for our first task, which is research the participants, the thought is going to be something like, now I have to use a tool to search about the participants and the companies involved in the meeting. Now it's going, after that, it is going to choose a tool and out of a set of definite, defined actions that it's going to have inside the prompt, it is going to choose one action, okay? And each action is going to have specified with, with input it can, put, it can accept. In our case, each action is going to be using each one of our tools. That way it was, that's why it was so important to give a description to our tools because that way the agent is going to know what each tool does and decide what action to take with these tools. And it is going to also return to us the the input that is going to input to this tool. Then once you get that tool, it is going to execute the tool and whatever the tool or the function returned, it is going to be called the observation. And this observation is going to be appended into the context. So now the context is the task, the description of the task, the thought, the action, and the observation of the first action. And then it can enter the thought again and think, okay, so now I have information about this. Now maybe I have to research information about this other thing. And it is going to use the search tool again. And it is going to have another observation that is going to be appended. And notice that we're making several language model calls here. So we're making a language model every time the agent thinks. And maybe also every time the agent ha executes a tool, depending on our tool. And we're appending that into the observation. Let me show you how that looks like in, in your actual prompt. So this is how the prompt looks like in, in Crew AI. So the prompt that you're actually going to be sending to the language model looks something like this. You are A, then the role of the agent that is assigned to the task. In our case, we're going to be dealing with the first task, which is research the participants. And so here it would be something like, you are a research specialist. And then you have here the backstory. That's why the backstory was so important because it's going to allow you to give this backstory to your agent that will give you more probabilities of getting a good answer from your language model. So you're a research specialist, and then the backstory of this one, as a research, research specialist, your mission is to uncover detailed information, blah, blah, blah. And then your goal is, and then the task agent goal, I mean the goal of your agent assigned to this task, because remember that when defining our agent, we also set the goal right here, conduct thorough research on people, companies involved in the meeting. And that is what we have right here. Your goal is to conduct thorough research on people and companies involved in the meeting, right? After that, you have the following tools at your disposal. And here you have the following tools at your disposal. And as you can see, we're also taking the tools from the agent that is assigned to the task. So we're going to be listing these tools right here. And as you can see in our prompt, we have them right here. We have the search tool, the find similar tool, and the get contents tool. 
And here you have how you call the function, which input it takes, and also the description that we gave to it in the documentation comment, right? Now, something interesting to note right here is that we have a couple other tools that we didn't add ourselves. These tools come by default in all of the Crew AI agents, and if you want to, de to disable them, you would have to disable them manually. But for now, know that by default, all of the agents can actually delegate work to a coworker, which means that they are going to call this function called um, delegate work to coworker, and it is going to take the coworker, the task, and the contacts. And it is going to send the task to them, and it is going to also um, give them all the context necessary to perform that task. Okay. And they also have the possibility of asking a question to a coworker. And by asking a question to a coworker, also, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but they actually expect a result um, in return. And the task to conduct comprehensive research, da 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 da, and then you have the description of the task. Okay. And consider that they do this using this other method right here that we have, which is how agents think, which is what I was talking to you about. So we have the thought, which is that given some context, they use the LLM to think what they're going to be doing afterwards. So after they get the results from that prompt that I showed you, they're going to append the results to the end of that prompt. Then the action, which is the one that they're going to choose from the list that you just saw, the action input and the observation, which is the one that is going to be appended so that they can think again until they think that I now have all the information required to complete this task and they are going to just return the information required. Okay, this is a very high level overview of how this works, but it's just to show you how this is actually going on behind the scenes. Okay, so there you go. That is how uh, agents work. And also, as you may have noticed now, they can ask questions to each other. So that's why the diagram I showed you at the beginning was kind of an oversimplification. So here's another diagram that exemplifies in a little bit more realistic way how these crews work, at least in a sequential process. Okay, so here we have the two tasks that were defined using async set to true, which means that they are being executed at the same time. And then the context from these tasks is going to be passed into the meeting strategy, and it's going to be appended into the prompt. And then once the meeting strategy is done, we're going to pass all of the context from these three into the summarizing and briefing task, which is going to give us our result. And the part of the agents also looks a little bit more different, because now we don't have just one agent doing one thing, we actually have the agents asking questions to each other to find the right answer to your tasks, okay? That is the reason why I decided that the brief and summary writer and the meeting strategist did not necessarily have to have access to the tools um, of EXA to search the web, because they are only supposed to be working on the information that the specialized researcher and industry analyst got for them. Okay, so that is why we did this. And that is why we're using, that's why I took the tools from them, because in the documentation, they actually have the tools I figured that if they want to find more information, they can use the delegate tool or the ask question tool to actually get information, what the information that they need from the researcher or the industry analyst. Okay, so that is how agents work. And that is, that is a more reliable, a more realistic overview of what is going on behind the scenes in Crew AI. So I hope this makes it a little bit clearer. Awesome. So first of all, congratulations, because I mean, by getting all the way to here, you have successfully completed all of the small components that are going to be used to create our crew. So you have made the already the most difficult part. Now, from now on, it is only just putting everything together and seeing the magic develop in front of our eyes. So congratulations for that. 
Now what we're going to be doing actually is to put everything together. I'm going to go to main.py and in here, well, first of all, I am actually just going to create my main function just to make this a little bit more organized. And first of all, let's import from .tnv. We're going to import load.tnv and we're going to call it right here. There you go. And this is just to make this more organized and to be sure that this is only executed if the file is executed directly, right? Now right here we're going to import from crew AI. We're going to import crew, which is the class that we're going to use to create our crew. Now from tasks, we're going to import meeting prep tasks and from agents, we're going to import meeting prep agents. Now, to be clear, what we're importing from tasks and agents is actually from these two files, the, the tasks and the agents that we previously uh, defined. Okay, so that's what we're importing right here. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to set up my input, right? Because remember that right here, we had the user inputs. So we have to ask the user for these inputs. First of all, I'm going to I mean, this is not going to have a graphical user interface. It's going to be in the terminal. So we're going to print welcome to meeting prep crew, some dashes, and let's just refactor this. Meeting participants is going to be input by the user. What are the emails of the participants in the meeting? Then we're going to have meeting context, which is going to be the context of the meeting and the meeting objective, which is the meeting goal that we have right here. Okay. Now, once that we have that, now we're going to start initializing our agents and our tasks. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to initialize the tasks object and the agents object with the classes that I imported from agents and from tasks. And this two, I am going to use them to create my agents, first of all. Okay. So the agents are going to be my research agent, first of all. Um, then we're going to add my, then the second one, which one was it? The industry analyst, industry analysis agent agents industry analysis and what we're doing here is actually calling the method from the agents from the meeting prep agents class right so here i'm calling the research agent method which if you remember correctly when we go to agents research agent it actually returns the agent from crew ai with all the roles goals and backstory that we defined before so that's what we're doing right here now we're doing the same thing with the other agents right here, which are the meeting strategy agent and the summary and briefing agent. Then after that, we're going to create our tasks. The tasks are going to be just like we defined before right here. First of all, research and analyze industry. We're going to do the research task, which just like we saw before, remember, we're calling the method from the tasks meeting prep tasks class. Okay. And this method, if you remember correctly, it takes an agent, the meeting participants and the meeting context. So we're going to pass in the research agent, which is the one in charge of the research task, the meeting participants and the meeting context. We're going to do the same thing with all of the other tasks, which are going to be the industry analysis task, the meeting strategy, the meeting strategy task, so let's call, let's create this one called industry, industry analysis task. I was hoping GitHub would give me an autocomplete. There you go. And a summary and briefing task. Okay. So we are creating our three, our four tasks, each one with its own agent research agent, industry analysis agent, meeting strategy agent, and summary and briefing agent, and each of them with the context required. In which case, for the first two, it is the meeting participants and context, and for the um, 
third and fourth is the meeting context and the meeting objective. Okay. Now, something to consider right here is that these tasks require context. Okay. As you can see right here, the research and the analyze industry tasks, they don't have a context property right here, but the meeting strategy and the summarizing and briefing uh, tasks, they do have a context property. And their context is supposed to be, for us, I mean, for the meeting strategy, it is supposed to be the results from the research, um, from the research task, and for the analyze industry task. And for the summarizing and briefing task, the context is supposed to be the results from the research task, the analyze industry task, and the meeting strategy. So this one takes the context from this two, and this one from this three. So let's actually set that right now. In order to do that, all you have to do is to call your call your task and add the context like this. We're going to say that the context is going to be equal to, and we're going to pass in just a list, and each one of these objects actually contains the results from that task. So here we have the results from the research task, the results from the industry analysis task, and these results are going to be appended to the end of the prompt when we send the prompt for the meeting strategy task. And this last one is going to be the summary and briefing task, and this one also takes some context, and this one takes the context from the other three. So there you go. Now we have successfully created all of our agents and our tasks. It's time to actually create the crew using all of this. So to create the crew, this is very simple. We're going to be using this class that we imported from Crew AI. And what we're going to do is just going to say crew equals, we're going to initialize our crew. And this one takes several parameters. The first one is the agents. And this is basically just a list of all of our agents that we have defined up here. So there you go. And then it is going to take the tasks. And these ones are just going to be a list of all the tasks that we defined up here. And there you go. Now, by default, your process is going to be sequential. Okay, so here you see process sequential, but I mean, that's that's the default, so we're not going to touch it. We're just going to leave it at sequential. But know that if you wanted a hierarchical, uh, a hierarchical process, this is where you would have to add it in process hierarchical. Okay, so now that we have created our crew, we can effectively execute it. And in order to run it, what we're going to do is we're going to say result crew dot kickoff and this is going to this is going to execute your crew and return the final result from the final task which is going to be your final goal of your entire crew okay now i wanted to mention something a little bit important about the costs of this so let's talk about that now so let's talk a little bit about the costs of all of this okay you have to consider that, of course, we are making calls to our language models and that is expensive. And you also have to consider the API calls to your tools that might be expensive as well. I mean, in our case, EXA is free for the first thousand uh, requests, so you don't have to worry about that. But you have to remember that agents are using the reactive model, which is this one right here. Remember that this means that they can perform a chain of thought prompt in a loop until they find, until they think that they have completed the task. So every time they think about anything right here, they are making an API call to your language model. And this can become quite expensive, especially because Crew AI works with GPT-4 by default. You can change that. Uh, but by default, it works with GPT-4 and actually GPT-4 is the one that works the best with what I have tested. So when you are designing your crew, I would recommend that you make sure that you have a clear monitoring setup in place and that you know how much this is costing you. So for example, to give you just a quick example about this, these tasks in what I have tested, each one of these, um, each one of these tasks uh, turned out to be about five, 
five to nine iterations of the cycle until they each I mean for each task until each agent decided that it has the answer to the task so in the end all of this ended up costing me something like seven to nine dollars for just a single execution of the crew okay so bear that in mind um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to monitor this using Langchain. Just, I mean, this is kind of a bonus so that you know how much you're, sp you're spending and you can visualize how this works. Okay, so let's actually do that. So let's start by setting up some of our API keys. As you can see, you can come to platformopenai.com to create your API keys. And you're going to want to add a billing method in actual in order to actually use these language models. Okay. Then you're going to go to exa dashboard.exa.ai, and you're also going to generate your API key right here. Remember that exa is free for the first thousand requests, and I don't remember actually adding my credit card account, so that one's for free. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Langsmith, which is a monitoring method a monitoring platform that allows you to check exactly which requests are being sent to your language model, what the responses are for each one of the requests, and how much this is costing you. And in order to do that, you just have to set these two, this two environment variables, Langchain Tracing and Langchain API Key, which you will get, I mean, the API key you get it in Langsmith, and the tracing, you just set it to true. And that is what I have done right here. I mean, of course, I will delete all of these API keys before publishing this video, but this is how this should work. Now, what we're going to do right here is we're actually just going to execute this and see how this works. And just by adding these API keys, Langsmith is going to be able to log everything that happens just by adding this. Okay, so let's do that right now. And actually, another thing that I wanted to show you is how to test this with GPT-3 instead of GPT-4. Because remember that Crew AI works by default with GPT-4. So here they tell you which environment variable you have to update if what you want to use is another language from OpenAI. So I'm going to come right here. And instead of GPT-4, we're going to be using the latest GPT-3.5 Turbo which has a context window of 16,000 tokens, which should be enough for our chain of thought, hopefully. So, oops, this one is supposed to be GPT 3.5 Turbo, like this. Now, if I save this, I should be able to run this. There we go. So we can actually start executing this. In order to do that, what I'm going to have to do is just go Python and then execute the main file, which is going to create my crew and then execute the crew kickoff. Actually, I forgot to print the results. So let's print the results here. Like that. There you go. So now I save it and I'm going to execute it right here. As we have defined, it is going to ask me for the participants of our meeting. Who are the, what are the emails of the participants? And my meeting is going to have Sam Altman from OpenAI, Tim Cook from Apple, and Sundar Pichai from Google. These are, of course, not the actual emails, because I don't have them. And if I had them, I would not share them like this. What is the context of the meeting? The participants of the meeting have decided that they want to find a new industry to invest in. They have lost faith in artificial intelligence, so they want to start investing in cat coffee shops. Cat coffee shops are cafes where people come to drink soft drinks with cats walking around. The clients are allowed to pet the cats. So, let's see. And the goal of the meeting is to find a way to enter this new market and make it profitable. Ideally, the participants should be able to find a location to open their first cat coffee shop. So let's see what GPT-3 is able to get for us. So I'm going to hit enter here and we have entering new crew agent executor. All right, so the first action was search 
and it's starting to surge. It's also logging some errors. Well, the crew seems to be working correctly. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause this and show you how this looks once this is finished. So, the execution is finished, and as you can see here is what the agents were thinking all the time. I mean, it took a few minutes. Um, it always thinks... It, it, I mean, as I told you before, it starts all with a thought. I need to further analyze the content of the articles to extract insights. Then the action, it shows to find similar action in this case. Action input, sent in a URL, etc. Okay, and sometimes it would encounter some errors. And here is the end result. Now, we are talking with GPT 3.5. And it did make some mistakes. Apparently, we didn't even get the bias from the participants. This doesn't happen with GPT-4. I'm going to run this with GPT-4 in a moment, just to show you how this works. But you can see here we have the industry overview, the talking points, and the strategic recommendations. Looks pretty good. Now, how about we take a look at how this works in, Lang in Langsmith and what was actually going on behind the scenes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my projects, and here is my default project where everything was logged in. And here is my recent my recent execution. So here we have the first one, for example. Here we have that this is the query agent executor. And here we see all the prompts that were sent to OpenAI. And you can see you're an industry analyst. And industry analyst, your analysis will identify key trends, blah, 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 which is what we wrote. Then the list of the tools that we selected here, search, find similar, get contents, and as I mentioned before, delegate work or ask a question to a coworker. We also have the following format, thought, action, input and observation, just to prompt the, the agent that this is the way that it has to think, to prompt the react loop, and then the current task, which is analyze the current market industry, etc and the participants, the meeting context, etc. And then we just prompt it to get the next thought. And here you have the output. And you can see that this particular agent went through a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 loops in this React cycle. So it made 14 calls before actually completing this task, which is huge if you're using GPT-4. Um, I'm going to show you the results of this same crew using GPT-4. I mean, GPT-4, I've tested it and it doesn't make this kind of mistakes, but it does become much more expensive. So as you can see here using GPT-3, this costed me not too much actually. Yeah, that was all right. But if I had been going with GPT-4, let me show you. Um, yeah, I think last time I executed this was like four years, something like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you're executing this kind of change. I'm going to run this in GPT-4 to show you how this works. All right, so let's do this again, but this time we're going to be using GPT-4. And in order to do that, I am just going to go back here and select the latest GPT-4 model and just complete this right here. So now we're going to be using GPT-4 and I am going to test exactly the same chain. I'm actually going to open a new terminal so that we can so that we can compare both of them. So here I'm going to remember conda activate crew tutorial and then I'm going to just execute this Python main file. Again the emails of the participants the context of the meeting which is that they have decided that they want to abandon AI and go for creating cat coffee shops and the objective which is finding the next location and now we're entering the crew executor chain and let me just show you this in real time in here so you can see it has started two agent executors and this is of course because the first two tasks are asynchronous which means that they are executing themselves simultaneously that's why we have two agent executors here so let's see, as you can see, I mean, from the start, we're starting with much higher costs. This never went above one cent. I mean, once, yeah, 
but here it just it just started and it's already at one cent so let's see how this goes let's open this start saying there you go we have a, an exception here and you can start seeing the prompts that this is sending you are a research specialist blah 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 and then you have the thought to conduct comprehensive research blah 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 so let's come back here and i am going to show you i'm going to post the video i'm going to show you the results in a moment so there we go it has finished with all of the chains and all of the agents right here executions so here we have the finished chain the briefing document for the cat coffee shop investment meeting we have the introduction this briefing document aims to equip meeting participants with comprehensive insights blah blah blah, blah, blah. we have the participant bios which are, which are correctly set up here CEO of Google, Apple, and OpenAI. Industry overview, the cat coffee shop industry, looks great. Key talking points, strategic recommendations, discussion angles, and a conclusion. And yeah, I mean, you can see that GPT-4 does a much better job at this. And you can see that it also managed to finish the tasks in way less uh, calls, actually. So that's actually good news. We had one, two, three, four calls in this agent, one call for this one, and one call for this other one because we didn't allow them to use the tools for the web. So yeah, I mean, actually this one wasn't that expensive because we removed the tools, um, the, the research tools from the last two agents. So I've, apparently GPT-4 is much more powerful. So there you go. So that was your introduction to Crew AI. We saw all the components that involved the creation of a crew, including the tasks, the agents, and the tools, and everything inside of a sequential process. We also saw how this works behind the scenes, how the agents think behind the scenes, and we tested the whole thing with GPT-3 and GPT-4. Let me know what kind of other videos you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and please support me on Patreon. I recently opened this Patreon account and this will allow me to continue doing this for free for you. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.